the Nevada Wolfpack. Eight and five last year, five and three in conference. Returning starters, they got four on offense, four on defense. Number nine most experienced in the Mountain West. So not good down there towards the bottom. Uh, number 112 in the country. Again, not good. Not great. Head coach Jay Norvell, 11 and 14 in two years. Look, he got his offense clicking last year. Number 24 passing offense in the country. Had 278.8 yards per game. They're returning both tackles, but they lost the entire interior of the offensive line. You know how important that is. That's a pretty big deal. Uh, replacement for Ty Gangi, uh, who is the quarterback, is just wide open. That's right. Like, yeah, at, like four or five guys competing for that job. Yeah, it's it's ridiculous. Um, but I will say the so there are some people that think that the last chance you quarterback Malik Henry uh, that he is the one that's going to take this over. Uh, some are saying that it's going to be retro freshman Carson Strong. Senior quarterback Christian Solano, uh, it could be any one of them. And they will still all probably be pretty good because I think they all fit into this offense. I was just about to say, I trust Jay. Like, yeah. like he's an offensive guy, and I think that he can replace his quarterback. Yeah. Um, I've, I've, I've watched his brother do it here in Memphis. Yeah. And every time we go from somebody who we think, man, that guy's not going to be replaceable, we're not that kind of school, you can't just run a new guy, and it, it just kind of – yeah, it seems to work out just fine. Um, I trust his offensive system. I like this guy. I like this team. Sophomore running back. Now check this one. I don't. I'm probably gonna murder this one. Give Toa. Give a good shot. Toa Tawa. T a u a. So T o a T a u a. Uh, this dude is an absolute star. Okay. I've I've what I remember watching Nevada several times last year. Typically with the mute button on because of course I had three or four different things set up to watch. Uh, and I did bet on them a lot because they were rolling points-wise. Uh, but, yeah, he's he's a star. He's going to be awesome, so keep an eye on him. Just two of their top seven tacklers return for the number 58 total defense. Defensive coordinator Jeff Castile, uh, his three three five was effective last year. I think the defense could actually improve a little bit, even losing you know uh, just uh, two of the top seven tacklers yeah. returning. Um, but uh, again, tough schedule, like really difficult schedule. Uh, when eight and five last year, I think they fall back to the pack a little bit this year. I think the offense will still be able to click some, but not early. Uh, they open with Purdue and at Oregon. That's right. I got losses for both of those. You're not winning those games. I've got a win over Weber state, a win at UTEP. So that puts you back at two and two, then a loss to Hawaii that puts you at two and three. But then I think after the bye week, October 5th, they get the offense kind of figured out, right? A win over San Jose State. I think they upset Utah State on the road. I've got them losing at Wyoming because I think that that style can beat them. Um, a win over New Mexico, a loss at San Diego State, a loss at Fresno State, and a win over UNLV. That puts them at 6-6 six and six and get invited to one of the, the smaller bowls. So six and six, and then four and four in conference. Got them seven and five. One game better than you. Okay. So, I I I like Jay. I think they'll figure the offense out, and um, and they'll find another win in there somewhere. Yeah, that's totally reasonable. 